Welcome to Book Chat. Today I'm interviewing author Louisa Luna about her mystery book, Two Girls Down. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Here on Book Chat, we get bookish with roundtable book discussions, book recommendation lists, interviews, and more. Be sure to check out shelfaddiction.com for even more content. Before we get started, let me tell you a bit about today's interview guest. Louisa Luna is the author of the novels Two Girls Down, Brave New Girl, Crooked, and Serious as a Heart Attack. She was born and raised in the city of San Francisco and lives in Brooklyn with her husband and daughter. If you'd like to comment on something you've heard during today's episode, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shelf Addiction. The links for everything related to today's episode, including Louisa's social media links, are below in the show notes. Hi, Louisa. Welcome. Thank you for coming on today. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. I'm super excited to talk about your book, Two Girls Down. But first, let's learn a little bit about you. All right. What are you reading right now? What am I reading? I am reading a great book um, called Afterbirth by Elisa Albert. Um, she, I guess she's been around for a while. I, But I first came to know her. I read a short story of hers in Tin House last month and uh, Tin House Magazine. Um, and it was first person kind of, uh, I hate to use the word quirky because I think that's kind of overused and kind of uh, dismissive, but I don't mean it in that way. The, prog- the protagonist was sort of this quirky young woman um, and it was about kind of navigating female friendships. Uh, and I was so taken with the voice that she created in this short story. So I looked up all of her books after that. And uh, I just I just picked up her newest one, which was from 2015 called Afterbirth, which is about um, uh, another young woman who's, you know, just recently given birth. And so it's really, really interesting to take great voice, like just great wow. voice, great tone. Oh, I love when I just stumble upon authors like that. That's great. I know. I know. It was, yeah, I I can't wait to read everything, all of her yes. stuff. <laughs> okay, so tell me, do you have a go-to author that you will just auto-buy whatever book it is without even second-guessing it? Oh, I have a few. Um, the first one that comes to mind is George Saunders. Um, when Lincoln and the Bardo came out, I went and I got it first day. It was like my Harry Potter. Like I went <laughs> to my indie bookstore and... I got it, and then I read it in like thirty six hours. Um, yes, <laughs> which awesome. which for me, I mean, it doesn't sound so quick, but which for me, with like between a day job and between you know picking up my daughter and all that stuff, to read a book at that speed is is uh, you know a little unusual for me. It usually takes me a little bit longer, but um, yeah, I get it. As the person who also works full time, that is pretty. That's pretty fast without a weekend involved. <laughs> <laughs> right. With no weekend. Right. It's kind of a gift when the subway gets stuck because I do get a little more reading time. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about like your influences. Do you have any books or authors that you say have maybe contributed to your style? You know, I it's funny because the people who come to mind are not necessarily mystery or thriller writers. Uh, and yet... I kind of think about them and I think what connects them all for me is uh, just their sort of the way they create an atmosphere. Um, And that's certainly what I try to do. Um, And I think that, you know, all good books have that in common, no matter the genre is sort of the atmosphere um, and the characters that sort of come out of it. So uh, one of my favorites is, Donald Ray Pollock. Um, he's wonderful. He gave me a, a blurb for my book. And he, I mean, I did not know him before that. I wrote him sort of an email um, blindly and he was kind enough to do it. But, he, you know, the way he creates these towns that I think, you know, sometimes the towns have real names and sometimes uh, I'm not sure if he fictional, he creates fictional towns or not, but um, just really um, an amazing rendering of 
of place and and the people who exist there. Um, he's the first one that comes to mind. Um, and then I already, you know, mentioned George Saunders. Obviously, the way he puts together a sentence is like, you know, I don't know, pretty incredible. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I could go on. I, can, I have a bunch. But, okay, um, well, we'll go with those two. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Two Girls Down. Uh, sure. Was this your first time publishing like a crime mystery genre book? Well, I published three books when I was in my 20s, which was a long time ago. And um, the last of those three was sort of my crack at like a modern noir. Um, and it wasn't, I didn't think it was really successful. It certainly wasn't successful commercially. I didn't think looking back on it, it was narratively successful. But, you know, it's a form that I've, and a genre I've always loved and I've always been intrigued by. Um but Two Girls Down was really my first um, sort of serious foray into um, thriller suspense, um, that genre. And so, um, I'll, yes, I'll be honest, I did not know what I was doing through a lot of it. <laughs> it was a lot of uh, fake it till you make it kind of attitude. Um, uh, and then I just sort of had kind of a, had had like a blind confidence of like, uh, yeah, well, I'm sure my subconscious knows how this works out. I can't wait to see <laughs> what oh my it has gosh. planned. Yeah, yeah. It well, the whole fake it thing. till you make it worked for you. Yeah, so. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it worked out that time. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about Two Girls Down. For those that don't know what it's about, just give us kind of a high level. Sure. Um Sure. It is about uh, two sisters who vanish from a parking lot in um, sort of suburban uh, northeastern Pennsylvania in a small town. Uh, but it is primarily about um, the investigators who are hired to find them. There is a, a woman, Alice Vega, who's a former bounty hunter, and she takes on um, – she is not from the town. Uh, she takes on a partner in Max Kaplan, who's an ex-cop. So he sort of is the insider there. And he, he you know, together they, they embark on this, um, this case of finding these two sisters. Um, that's the short version. <laughs> okay. So I've got to ask. So I did read the sure. book and I enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. So with all of the twists and turns, did you like mm. heavily plot this book or did you kind of just f roll with it and see, you know, what happens happens? Well, okay. So you need, it has to, you got to do half and half. So I, you know, as I said before, there was a lot of faking it till making it. <laughs> However, um, I kind, and I actually kind of write all of my books like this. I had a midpoint in mind. And I wasn't sure when I started, and I wasn't sure if that midpoint was in fact going to be the midpoint or if it was the end. So I will tell you that I didn't know the ending uh, when I started, um, but I did have just a vague direction. And um, as I got to that midpoint, um, which, since you read it, you'll remember was the scene in the woods at the cabin. Like, I knew mm -hmm. that was going to be uh, sort of a turning point. Mm -hmm. um, and when I got there, uh, I knew the rest was going to be sort of a wild, like, roller coaster down. You know, de the downside of a roller coaster was just going to be like a race to the finish. Um, and it was. It really thank was. You. Oh, good. I'm so glad that you told me that you didn't know the end because I am the yeah. kind of person where I can guess most of the time, but yeah. not in this case. I was like, okay. oh, it's, it's kind of convoluted. How are we going to get here? No, that's wrong. That's not right either. Yeah, and yeah, when yeah. it comes out, I'm like, oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I get it. Yeah. So I love that you were able to kind of hide that from me. That's oh, awesome. good. I am glad. I love it. <laughs> I have had people say, uh, some people say that they knew, that they guessed. And I was like, yeah, even if you guess, though, and I think this is the thing about mysteries that I like, even if you know who it is, how they did it, if you know all the, you know, the clue board game stuff, the who and the with what and the what room, it's still finding out sort of the how, like how and why. That's the more interesting 
you know, yeah. question of it. So even if you know the spoiler of the ending, I think that it's still enjoyable and it's still, uh, I don't know if enjoyable is the right word. It's still sort of, um, you know, interesting and, and provocative, you know, finding out how we get there. That is another thing that I really enjoyed about this book was the how do you get there? It felt like I was watching a crime drama on TV and we Ah. were kind of getting into like the the clues along with Vega and Cap. It was kind of like, oh, you know, so it did feel like that. So definitely I think you hit the mark with that. Oh, thank you. That's great. Absolutely. You're making my day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm glad to do so. It was enjoyable. Um, so I've really been into true crime lately. So this subject matter hmm. was like really something that I wanted to read. So I yeah. got to know what kind of research did you do to kind of prepare to write this kind of book? Um, well, I don't claim to be an expert at all. I only read a few books and just did some sort of statistical type of research online. Um, I really pulled mostly from my imagination, but I will, uh, in terms of missing persons, there's a great book called, um, bringing Adam home, uh, by, um, Les Standiford, uh, about the Adam Walsh case, uh, from the early eighties. Um, there is another great one called, I think, The Last Place You'd Look by Carol Moore. And then, um, I think that's her name, Carol Moore. I hope so. And then um, one that came out a few years ago called People Who Eat Darkness, um, Richard Lloyd Perry. He's a journalist and he wrote it. Uh, and that was about a young woman who went missing and then was found dead in Japan, um, mm. in Tokyo. So, I mean, none of these... It, it served as really sort of more of a background. Um, And in terms of procedure and things like that, I had a cop friend who's sort of just, I mean, basically I gave him the manuscript and I said, look, I said, I don't need to know if it's probable that this will happen. I just need to know, is it possible? Like if you're a cop reading this and he was like, cops never read stuff like this. I said, I know. But if you're a cop reading this fiction book about cops, like, you know, and about like a missing person, he's like, we all read nonfiction. I was like, I'm sure you do. But if, you know, whatever, the stars should align and you should read a book like this. Um you know, I just need to know that it's possible. And he gave his stamp of approval. He was like, sure, it could happen. Like, and that's all I needed. Like, I, you know, I'm not um, doing the Richard Price riding around in the backseat of the cop car for research. Like, I'm not at that level. I don't have those kinds of resources. (laughs) You know, I, I just didn't go that route. It is a work of fiction. If it's not, um, I, I tried to stay sort of as realistic as I could, but really I'm just trying to sell it to, the readers, the people who are reading it. I don't necessarily need to sell it to a real like federal agent who's going to read right. it. I'm sure they would poke holes in it. Luckily, you know, their uh, federal agent is not my copy editor, so I'm good or my editor. Yeah. Well, you kind of had the trifecta going on here with the police, the FBI, and then of course a private investigator. There was like yeah. a, a balancing act going on there between them for a while. Yes. Um, yeah. And I tried to just sort of render that. Um, you know, there, there is the, the sort of initial turn where the police department is not particularly, you know, those who are in the police department are not, it's a bit fractured and it's not particularly, um, on the level and they hit some resistance, but by the, by the midpoint, all of them are working together, um, which from the research I have done from talking to my friend, that is, that is mostly how it goes. It, you know, I, I mean, again, I can only speak in very general terms. I don't know specific um, cases. Um, I didn't want to put, I didn't want to put sort of too many obstacles there to make it contrived. Um, uh, and I wanted those characters, you know, to to sort of respect each other and uh, and be their own people, you know. Yeah. Because um, I know when I'm reading something or I am um, uh, watching a show or something, and and there's those stereotypes like you know the the federal agent who's always in the way, you know, and like I don't know whatever those stereotypes are. I just like to fight those. I like to go go away from those. Yeah, I'm glad they kind of got over themselves, got out of their own way and decided to work together, yeah, um, which is very important for, you know, Alice Vega, because 
this woman is very different. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about Alice a little bit. I, sure. I would love to know, like, mm-hmm. how you kind of formed her character because she's very unique. She's got some things going on here. <laughs> There's a lot happening. There's a lot happening yeah. under the surface. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, she's um, very deep. And I hope, you know, as we go out longer with this series, it looks like it's a series we get to know more about her. But yes, you know, and, uh, yeah. you will. Uh, okay. You will, but not too much. I got to tell uh, you, she plays it close to the best. But she, um, you know, when I started the book, I really just had a couple of images of this protagonist. I knew I wanted a tough female protagonist. Um, I I knew, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to make her stand out. I wanted to make her, you know, an ex-bounty hunter and make that sort of believable, you know, and not not make it like she was some kind like a superhero, but make it, you know, believable that she could sort of handle herself physically Mm -hmm. um, without being like a, you know, a giant woman or anything (laughs) or like, or or a bodybuilder, you know, something, uh, but I wanted to make it believable. Um, So with that, um, the first, the images I had is the, the, the first one was the opening image of her, you know, sort of doing a handstand in the middle of the room. And I just thought that was so kind of striking and intriguing. And um, I don't know, I wanted to just work from there and, and think about that and think about someone who starts their day that way every day. And wow. then um, the other one, and someone who is physically strong enough to start their way that day every day. Mm-hmm. Um, that sort of informs her character a little bit, too. Um, and then the other image uh, I had was, um, this happens about, I don't know, I guess it's like 50 or 60 pages in. But it's when you, we as the reader don't really know her too well. And then she drags this guy across a parking oh, lot. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, she's got to be strong the way she pulled that guy along. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. And the way I, uh, the way I was writing it, I thought, well, this is when, like, that's when I sort of got to know her. And I feel like that's when the reader gets to know her. They're like, oh, okay. Like, she's, she's not going to take any shit. No, <laughs> she's she going to, and she, <laughs> she's going to do what she needs to do. And yeah, um, she's got her own set of rules, too, seems like. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And she, uh, yeah. So, uh, I, you know, and I, I spun out from there and then I also sort of wanted to craft like, well, if she can't use the physical, what else does she use? She uses words and she uses, you know, obviously her brain and she uses, uh, you know, figures out ways to talk to people. Um, and I feel like each interrogation and each, um, witness and, uh, whoever she's speaking to, she figures out the question that will get her, you know, the information she needs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like a good, a good detective. And I, yeah. you know, I love watching. And I think Cap is like the perfect kind of partner for her because he's like, you know, if there is a good cop, bad cop, you know, dichotomy going on, he's the good <laughs> and she's the bad usually. Until she's uh, using her, her psychology to trick you into thinking she's something else. Yeah, exactly. And then I, I love, I love being, uh, you know, I love the idea of the reader, like never really knowing, like, just like, okay, she's a bit of a wild card. But again, I, you know, hopefully that is not um, contrived. Hopefully it's like, you really believe that this woman is sort of a wild card, you know, but she's got some foibles. She's got a soft, some soft spots and she's, and by the end, I think she's very, revealed to be very human and very um yeah i mean uh, just like everyone else to an extent <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> obviously um yeah. but but i think the thing and i i wrote this recently in another q and a i did but i i think the important thing about her to know is that she's really not afraid of pain and she's not afraid of death and i think once you remove those barriers I don't know. She, she that makes her dangerous. Like, 
Yeah, she's just like uh, anything yeah. goes. You know, like all right, do whatever you want to me. I'm I'm good. I'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that scene we just talked about. I mean, yeah. she just walks up to this guy. Hey, are you X Y Z? Okay, great. You know, just, like, <laughs> let <what>? me <laughs> let me throw some boiling hot water on your yep. crotch. Right? <laughs> yeah, and she just takes him down. It's like crazy. Yeah. I'm like, no yeah. woman would just do that unless you know you can take him down, and she obviously does. Yeah. And then she's like, uh, and if I don't, you know, whatever. She's like, all right, I'll walk away with a black eye or broken arm, whatever. Like I'll, uh, that it'll heal. Like she, you know, she just Mm -hmm. doesn't, just doesn't care too much. Just doesn't care. Yeah. She's just trying to get all of the things like uh, out of the way so she can have what she needs to solve this case. So if that's what you need, here we go. Done. Yeah. All right, come here. Yeah, exactly. Here, yeah. come over here. Yeah, <laughs> she's totally. awesome. Like, You've... I love the psychological tricks that she uses. Like, did you yeah. just make that up, or did you do like some research about how people think or work, or you know? Because that was very interesting. She's done that a few times throughout the book. Yeah, no, I that was really a creation. I mean, it may have been. Um, you know, I may have in, been influenced by other characters. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but um, in terms of talking to people, I remember, it's funny you mentioned it though. Now that you do, I remember Googling like people's facial expressions when they are lying. And like, I, I remember looking up like, you know, sort of things that people's faces do when they're lying or hiding something or, you know, whatever, things that could tip her off that are, uh, you know, subtle, like heart rates and, you know, dilation of the eyes and stuff like that. And I just thought it, I wanted her to be the character that picked up on every clue, like picked up on everything. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say a Sherlock Holmes level of, you know, sort of OCD, but, <laughs> but just a, uh, you know, just being able to pick up on every subtle nuance of a person very quickly. Um, And I think Cap has those gifts too, in a different way. You know, he sort of can size up people pretty quickly himself. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I think, whereas he's more of a, um, I think Vega's a a little more attuned to the, to the sort of the psychological details right off the bat, just, you know, um yeah, she like kind they of kind of have different skill sets but they yeah. get to the same place just different ways yeah exactly exactly they're a good pair yeah so obviously you like a lot of things about vegas character was there anything that you don't like about her character um i don't know you know i feel like you know would i want to be friends with her i don't know but i'm getting that's getting too psychological you know i she's um i guess uh, again i can't think of anything but you know give us give me a few more books we'll see it might come mm-hmm. out <laughs> mm-hmm. she might do something i'm not so crazy about that's the thing i don't want her to like babysit my daughter but it's yeah. like she's well maybe i do i don't know i mean i certainly would feel pretty safe it was like don't worry you know uh yeah she would be a pretty good babysitter but i i I, um but i don't i feel almost like i can't judge her on those terms like uh, Mm -hmm. uh there is nothing i've hit yet that i don't particularly like about her but we'll again we'll see give her some time to open up and i liked max as well um i like i liked cap and i liked his daughter so i really like that dynamic as well yeah. Yeah. Snell. I mean, I kind of didn't know who Nell was, when, obviously, when I started writing, but I, I knew I wanted him to have sort of a brainy teenage daughter. That was sort of my initial idea. But then I wrote sort of the first scene with them and I was like, oh, this girl's really like, I, I don't know. She just sort of popped. Some characters just really jump off the page and she's one of them. And now I think she's ready for her own spinoff. So it's like, at some point, maybe the the Nell in, in college books, which is her own. Her own I can see her doing that. That girl's got it together. She does. She's, uh, yeah, she's, um, and I think what's great about, another thing that's great about Cap is that he really is totally at peace with the fact that, like, 
the women in his life are, you know, sort of have the right idea all the time. Like it's his daughter, it's Vega, it's even his ex-wife, Jules. Like he's just like, I should just trust these women more. Like, I think that's, you know, something he's probably well aware of. Mm -hmm. Um, But yes, Nell is, yeah, she's, she's ahead of the game. She's one step ahead of the game. Um, At least, at least. Yeah. Well, she's learned from her dad. You know, she's picked some things up from him probably. So Absolutely. Yeah. And mom's a woman's studies professor. So, you know, she's she's got both sides. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the audiobook. I actually got to listen to part of this on audiobook. Um, I'm a huge audiobook advocate. Oh good. I've got to say, Tavia Gilbert is one of my favorite narrators ever. I actually interviewed her last year. You did? Oh, I did. Yeah, she's sweet. Wonderful. I mean, talk about talented. Like, she just can do it all. Absolutely, she can. So tell me, how did you go about getting her for this project? Well, this was something that, you know, that Doubleday, they have a department that set it up. um, And they... So, you know, it, it's, I had not too much to do with it, um, but they did send me clips of a few people and they said, hey, you know, we're thinking, we don't know which way we're going to go with this. Uh, what do you think? You know, they certainly asked what I thought and what my opinion was. And I listened to all of them and I was like, it's pretty clear that Tavia Kilburn is the one, you know, we should go with. Um, it, it was just, um, you know very clear from listening to whatever sample they sent me of her that she could do this in a snap. Her voice just stretches in the way, like, you know, when someone's crying, she's kind of crying. The way, yeah, all the characters, you know, and uh, all of the nuance. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's a pro. She's a total pro. So I'm, yeah, I am beyond thrilled um, that she is, you know, representing the book on the audio side. Oh, I hope you get to keep her on for Me too. future books in this series. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Okay. Awesome. So is there anything else you'd want to share with us about Two Girls Down before we do the lightning round? Ooh, um, I don't think so. I will tell you that the the sequel will be out in about a year. In January 2020 is this current schedule for it. It's current, current pub date, and it's called The Janes. Um, and Cap and Vega are both back. And Yay. yes, and you're going to love it. You're going to love it. I was wondering if Cap would return, but I didn't want to like spoil it. But since you put it out there, yes. He will be. He will be back. <laughs> he will be back. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, yeah, I know. I'm a, Even as a writer, I'm a total Cap and Vega shipper. I love him. I love them. <laughs> I love them together. Yeah. I love them. So, I think it's, you know, if I had to guess as a reader, yeah, I'm yeah. going to guess they have a long haul before we you know, actually see them together. It's probably going to be a long time. My lips are sealed. I will. <laughs> Dog, My usually I can pull it out sealed. of people. I can't, you know, if I were yeah. drinking a beer, if I were drinking a beer, maybe. Oh, <laughs> you know, or a couple okay. beers, you could loosen my tongue. But no, yeah, no, not right now. You wait, oh. just wait for the sequel. You will not be disappointed in any way. It's going to okay. be, it's, it's a good one. Wonderful. Wow. Well, thank you for talking with us about that. And let's do a lightning round. Okay. What do I do? (laughs) Actually, I have a little timer and it's 60 seconds long. Okay. And the the thing is just to answer as many questions as you can in the 60 seconds. Some are book related, some aren't, some are open-ended questions and other require you to pick one or the other. The only rule is that you must choose. You can't say neither or both. Oh man. Can I give a can I give like addendums or footnotes or no? Oh, I just gosh. have to say yes or no. <laughs> I can't explain myself. <laughs> you can, but that eats up your time. So Okay, okay. All right. I'm ready. I'm I'm Okay, doing you ready? It. I'm good. Yes. All right. I'm in. I'm in it. Okay, here we go. Bring Physical it. books or ebooks? Physical. Hero or villain? <gasps> villain. That was the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Coffee, coffee, coffee. Bookstore or library? Bookstore. Android or Apple? Apple. Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. If you can pick one superpower, what would it be? Oh, boy. Um, I I think the first one that comes to my mind is flight, but that's so boring. So 
I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to say... No, I'm going to say like the x-ray vision. I think that's cool. The okay. x-ray vision type thing. Yeah. Cliffhanger or realistic ending? I think that the, they can be the same thing. Okay. A <laughs> book that you've, name a book that you've read in one sitting. One sitting. Ooh, well, Lincoln and the Bardo was almost that. Um, but it wasn't quite one. This is one. This is a hard one. Um, uh, time's up. <laughs> ah, no. Oh, well. I guess, yeah, I don't know if I have read a book in one sitting unless we're talking about, like, uh, you know, I don't know, a book I read, you know, to my daughter at night. But even she's reading her books or chapter books now. They're super long. Hmm. Yeah, but oh well, that's fun. Yeah, 60 seconds flies by, it really does. No kidding, no kidding. Well, thanks for doing that, that was super fun. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, everybody, be sure to follow Louisa Luna on social media and pick up a copy of Two Girls Down. The links for everything are below in the show notes. And don't forget to check out my five-minute shelf bite on the book Two Girls Down. Thank you again, Louisa. Thank you. All right, take care, everybody. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.